this weekend lightweight strikers clash we have the wolverhampton wolverine it's a black country banger it is jai herbert i mean he is the wanderer or they are known as wanderers in wolverhampton he's going to be taking on the nomadic wandering slovakian mr highlight Ludwig Klein in a big time matchup that has big time implications oh, yeah. as well. Because if you look at it for both these guys, I mean, Jai Herbert, it's just been like banger after banger after banger fights in the UFC. Both these guys' UFC careers have been like the TV show Deadliest Catch. Like, at one point in the TV show, the seas, they're very angry with the ships. They're going up and down. Things are looking ugly. But all of a sudden, things have kind of calmed down a little bit. They're throwing their uh, hooks into the water. They're grabbing the buoys. They're fishing for crabs. Things have definitely calmed down for both these guys after a very difficult start to the I don't careers. think they rip darts like those men at sea. Probably but not. When you do look at this matchup, Matt, and you consider it, I mean, you break down the fights and you say, okay, you have a look at it for Jai Herbert. He's definitely going to get the fan support. He's a guy that, when he has fought in London, he's gone 3-1 and one throughout his career, and he was able to get the belt over there and really get it going with Cage Warrior. He beat a couple of big time names. He beat Jack Grant by finish. And then he defended his belt against Kane Carrizoza, former UFC vet, before he came into the UFC. Now, if you look at it, he dropped Francisco Trinaldo and then he ends up getting finished. He fights Sonato Moicano. He gets finished again, takes on Common Worthy, finishes him. Lose Delia Tapuria, and then he ends up his last time out getting the win over Kyle Nelson, who was resurgent as that fight went along with his leg kicks. To be fair, Jai Herbert landed one of the cleanest non-knockout strikes in that fight against Ilya Tapuria. That I, head kick. Oh yeah, boy. I know he ended up losing, but that's on the short list of like Benil Daryush's overhand left against Mataush Gamrod of non-knockout shots that probably should have knocked their opponent out. But that's been the frustrating thing about Jai Herbert. You see this striking, you see how positive it can be, how he can flow with his boxing into his kickboxing too because I really only focused a lot on his boxing earlier on in his career but bringing up the Ilya Tapuria fight it does showcase a little bit of his kicks and how he's been able to implement those a lot more into his game and that's the thing about Jai Herbert when he is throwing the kick from the outside moving in with his boxing and really putting those two ranges together he can be a very difficult matchup for a lot of guys in this division but like we've mentioned like I said at the start of the episode these are two guys who on their best day can look really really good but on their worst day can kind of be caught in the mirror can struggle with their defensive strength and that's what I worry about with Jai Herbert in a matchup like this. I think he can have a lot of success from the outside. Again, he has devastating power when he is able to land. And like you mentioned, even in the losses, he will look well, good at a certain point. And against a guy like Ludwig Klein, that's been the most frustrating thing. I was really high on Ludwig Klein coming into the UFC. We saw the long distance head kicks, how great of a striker he was. He could threaten with submissions too if you're really going for a lot of takedowns. There was a lot of great skills to see, but the problem was... The aggressiveness didn't really seem to be there when he had initially come over to the UFC. And that's a difficult thing to explain because the skills are still there. He can still throw a lot of the same things, but he's not necessarily moving forward as much in these fights as we had necessarily seen before. In the two losses, for sure. And that's the weirdest part yeah. of it for Ludwig Klein. Coming into the UFC, he makes the debut. He's fighting out of Slovakia. And that's the important part. He's fighting out of Slovakia. So he takes his first fight against Shane Young. That one's at a catch weight of 150 pounds. Wins that one by knockout. Chef's the head goodness. kick is what does it. Then his next two fights, he loses one to Mike Trezano. He loses one to Nate Landwehr. Both of those fights, he's not fighting out of Slovakia. He's fighting out of Killcliffe, Killcliffe FC. He loses those two fights. Now he's on a two-fight win streak is Mr. Highlight Klein. He beats Devontae Smith by split decision. He beats Mason Jones, drops him in that fight. No one thought he was going to win that one. He looked great in that fight and sent Mason Jones packing from the UFC. Those two wins training and fighting out of Slovakia again. So he's got that Spartacus gym back in full force. And if you go down and you look at it on the regional scene, Ludwig Klein was all that in a bag of chips. Oh, I yeah. mean, he was able to implement good takedown defense, good Brazilian jiu-jitsu, really good hands, setting up those crazy kicks and that great lead hook that he's able to throw. But when you look at everything, and I considered it like all of these fights that he's had, 18 fights at featherweight he missed in that ufc debut that was at 150 pounds and then he had the two fights at 155 pounds those are both wins so it seems like 155 now he's kind of been able to acclimatize himself yeah. to the weight class things have been working out for him and again 3-0 in the ufc out of spartacus but when it comes to both of these guys ludwig klein's not going to stand out there and play the long game trying to draw out a lot of feints and i know jai herbert's been in some barn burners that common worthy first round it was just all all action but his first round against Francisco Trinaldo. We're pawing a little bit. The second round, he goes 
one, two, three, four jab, left hook, and then turns that right hand up and drops Francisco Trinaldo. Not only did he drop him, Trinaldo looked like he was surprised oh, to yeah. find himself on the mat. So if you go down through it, you watch these Jai Herbert fights, you touched on it. He goes out there. When he's throwing that kick, it really does set a lot it of does. things up, and it makes his opponents think. Because they know how dangerous he is at close range. When you're almost just giving out a bit of a threat at the long range, they're going to be more enticed to then put the fight where you can excel at, and that's what Jai Herbert does very well. Yeah, and I mean, you look at some of these fights, he's just able to go knockdown after knockdown after knockdown. He's training at a team renegade with the Edwards brothers is Jai Herbert. So big time opportunity for both of these guys. Herbert can struggle with some of the takedown defense, but he's one of the longest guys at six foot he one is, that you're yeah. going to find in this division. And his takedown defense, by and large, is pretty good. So you have a look at the odds in this one. Ludwig Klein is the slight favorite. We have a look at the topology votes. Matt, surprise to us there to you. I think they'll be close. I think they're going to be close too. I'm going to say over under 62.5% for Mr. Highlight. I think they'll be over, but ever so slightly. All right. So we have a look at the topology votes. And yeah, so 870 total votes, 69% Klein, 60% by knockout. For the 31% that have Jai Herbert, 53% by decision, 39% by knockout. Not a lot of people predicting a submission win for either of these guys here. No, and here's the thing. You don't want to be like, oh, I only like it when people stay in a bang, bro. These guys are going to stand and bang, though, and it should be a great fight. I ever so slightly do have Ludwig Klein, and I know I said I thought the Tapology voters would be very close, and I said it'd be over 62%, but for Klein, I think the right hook is going to be a big key in this fight, and I think his feints are going to be important, too, because if he can draw down the hands of Jai Herbert to then expose the chin, it has been a weakness for Herbert in the past, and that's the thing. When you fight like Jai Herbert, if you have a chin like Justin Gaethje, it works, right? If you can eat nine power shots to give two or three of your own, but your two or three are that devastating, then it does work. But for Herbert, you just wonder if he is going to be able to withstand some of the counter shots of Klein. So for that reason, I give Herbert a great chance, even a great chance to win this by finish, but I do have Ludwig Klein to win the matchup. It is a really tricky one because we've seen Klein underperform in those two for losses, sure. the one to Trezano, the one to Nate Landwehr as well. So again, you have to think another camp at Spartacus really will play out well for him. Two of his training partners that you got to go out and watch, Hafeni, Nafuka, and Salil Siraj, both of those guys are really doing the damn thing on the regional scene so some big guys on the come up i have mr highlight in this fight as well and i know i mentioned jai herbert's kicks is a little bit of a difference maker because we know how good his boxing combinations oh, yeah. are and he can pick his power shots but with klein if he's able to really add in the leg kick, that's been a bit of a detriment for Jai Herbert. We saw that in the last fight. Even though it was a win against Kyle Nelson, we're going to see how the southpaw look here plays out. But Matt, I think the winner gets Brad Riddell. Both of us going with Mr. Highlight, Ludwig Klein, to get the win. Some big-time fights on this card, including another man who has Highlight in the nickname, Justin Gaethje, who's taking on Rafael Fiziev in the co-main event. Usman Edwards, the trilogy in the main event. You're not going to want to miss it. Keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks, we always say. Let's, let's get, get into it. it.